Hello movie buffs and happy holidays. My name is Steve aka NG Movie Freak and today we're going to take another trip to the 80s where Christmas comedies ruled the landscape. You have great classics such as A Christmas Story, Scrooge, Home Alone and Die Hard. That's right, you heard correctly. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. The plot is as follows. NYPD detective John McClane arrives in Los Angeles and from there he has to be taken to the Nakatomi Plaza building to meet up with his wife Holly for the Christmas party. Christmas movie. Now I had a lot of great movies to choose from but I got a special request a few months ago from somebody and I just couldn't pass up on it. It's a classic, it's one of my favorites and I know it by heart. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is a 1989 Christmas classic written by John Hughes and directed by Jeremiah S. Chekik. The main cast includes Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, Juliet Lewis, Johnny Galecki, Randy Quaid, and Seinfeld's Julie Louis Dreyfus. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is actually the third movie in the franchise. In order, it's National Lampoon's Vacation, National Lampoon's European Vacation, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation 2, Cousin Eddie's Island Adventure, Vegas Vacation, and a 2015 remake. Uh, no, 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 never happened. It never happened. I said it never happened. It never happened. Sorry about that. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation was released on December 1st, 1989, 31 years ago. If you haven't seen it by now, and I hope you have, spoilers! The film begins on the road where Clark Griswold, his wife Ellen, daughter Audrey, and son Rusty are out driving to the country to find the perfect Christmas tree. After walking through the snow for hours, Clark finds the largest tree he can. Later, back home, both Clark and Ellen's parents arrive to spend Christmas, but the squabbling quickly begins to frustrate the family. Clark decides to cover the entire exterior of the house with 25,000 twinkling lights, which fail to work at first, but when they do, it temporarily causes a citywide power outage that creates pandemonium for Clark's uppity neighbors, Todd and Margot. While standing on the front lawn admiring the lights, Clark is surprised to notice that Ellen's atypical cousin Eddie and his wife Catherine have arrived with their two children and dog. Eddie later admits that the RV parked out front of his house is their home now since they are broke and was forced to sell his house. Clark begins to wonder why his boss Frank Shirley has not given him his yearly bonus, which he desperately needs in order to compensate for an advance payment he made to install an in-ground swimming pool for next summer. After a disastrous Christmas Eve dinner, including a dried out turkey, Aunt Bethany's cat getting electrocuted, Uncle Lewis accidentally setting the Christmas tree ablaze and himself on fire, Clark finally receives an envelope from a company messenger. Instead of the presumed bonus, the envelope contains a free year's membership for the Jelly of the Month Club. This prompts Clark to snap and go into a tirade about Frank and request that he be delivered to his house so Clark can insult him directly to his face. Eddie takes the request literally and drives up to Frank's mansion. While he is away, Clark replaces the destroyed tree with one that was out front of his house. While he is redecorating the tree, a squirrel pops out and wreaks havoc on the family. Eddie returns with Clark's boss Frank wrapped in a big red bow. He admits to having canceled the Christmas bonuses. Clark criticizes his boss and with the help of his family's guilt trip, he decides to reinstate the bonuses with an added 20% bonus on top of it. Soon after, a SWAT team storms the Griswold house and holds everyone at gunpoint but Frank said it was a mistake and decides not to press charges. The family then heads outside at the request of the children because they thought they heard and saw Santa in the distance. Clark tells them it is actually the Christmas star and that he finally realizes what the holiday means to him. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation represents the emerging demise of the working middle class. The crucial subplot in Christmas Vacation starts as an afterthought, but slowly unfolds starting with Clark Griswold's holiday bonus. Every year, Clark and his colleagues have gotten bonuses around the holidays. Clark's bonus check still hasn't arrived. What Clark doesn't realize is that things are changing in the American workforce. Phasing out holiday bonuses is just one of the many steps that corporate America began to take in the 1980s. 
Americans were only then beginning to sense that the labor culture might be taking a different turn. The Griswolds live next door to a married couple who represent the yuppie class of the 1980s. They have matching briefcases, jog around the suburbs in tracksuits, and own expensive stereo equipment. When Todd mockingly asks Clark where he's planning to put the humongous tree strapped to the top of the station wagon, Clark nonchalantly says, Bend over and I'll show you. This film reveals the difficulties between the labor classes with Hart by adding Clark Griswold's hillbilly cousins to the mix. Eddie, his wife, and their kids are family, so the Griswolds take them in. Besides being family, this scene shows the true acceptance of a different working class. However, the uncomfortable dynamic between a white-collar suburban dad like Clark and a backwards tongue-clicking southerner like Eddie potentially hints at class warfare. For a film released at the end of the Reaganomics decade, Chris's Vacation not only exemplifies how class warfare works in America, but it also speaks of class solidarity, and in the end, it's Cousin Eddie who saves the Griswold family Christmas. You surprised? <laughs> surprised, Eddie? <laughs> if I woke up tomorrow with my head sewn to the carpet, I wouldn't be more surprised than I am right now. <laughs> and now for some behind-the-scenes facts. Number one, the story for National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation originated from a short story that was written for National Lampoon magazine titled Christmas 59 in 1980. And can you guess who wrote this funny story? That's right, the brilliant John Hughes. There's also a reference, or a, a wink and nod if you may, in the film when Clark is in the attic looking through old film reels. Number two. This film installment took a back seat in terms of road tripping compared to the other two previous films. Fans have often debated whether it was a sequel or a spin-off movie on its own, considering that the Lindsay Buckingham song Holly Road is not heard once in the movie. Number 3. Late actress Bay Castell, who portrayed Aunt Bethany, was a famous actress and voice actress in the 1930s. You might remember her voice from Max Fletcher's Popeye as Olive Oil and as Betty Boop. Number 4. When filming the scene where Aunt Bethany breaks wind, a minor earthquake hit the set. If you look really closely in that scene, you can see the camera tremble a little bit. Number 5. There's actually a sequel to Christmas Vacation, but it was a made-for-TV movie called National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation 2 Cousin Eddie's Island Adventure. Now, this film was a huge flop and it barely made an attempt at fan service. However, it did have two people come back from the franchise. You had Dana Barron from National Lampoon's Vacation and Eric Idle from National Lampoon's European Vacation. Number 6. Randy Quaid borrowed a lot of Cousin Eddie's mannerisms from a man he knew growing up in Texas, one of the most notable ones being the tongue clicking. Now, the sweater and dicky combo was his wife's idea. Number 7. Chevy Chase suffered a real injury on set. During the scene where Clark has his meltdown on the lawn, Chevy actually broke one of his fingers when he punched the Sansa decoration. Now being the soldier that he was, and not wanting to delay the production any further, he continued to soldier on with the scene until the director yelled cut. Number 8. The year 1989 was a very slow period for Christmas movies, with only two being released, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and Prancer starring Sam Elliott and Cloris Leachman. What's interesting about both of these films is not only were they released in 1989 together, but both films featured future Big Bang Theory star Johnny Galecki. Number 9. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation's original director Christopher Columbus, who previously wrote The Goonies and Gremlins, did not get along with Chevy Chase. All throughout production, he kept begging John Hughes to give him another project once production wrapped. John Hughes gave him the script to Home Alone, and he loved it so much that he automatically signed on as director. Number 10. In 2010, there was a short film posted online titled Hotel Hell Vacation. Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo reprise their roles as Clark and Ellen Griswold and drive their Wagon Queen family truckster down to visit their son Rusty and his family at a beach house. It was the first time that Helen and Clark reprised their roles since 1997's Vegas Vacation. Bonus fact. I watch this film every year, at least three times before Christmas. And last year, I spotted something that I'd never seen before. The scene takes place in the Walmart, where Eddie and Clark are coming down the aisle, and Eddie keeps piling stuff on top of the cart. Let's see if you can spot it. If only I had back the money that me and Catherine sent that TV preacher that was screwing the hockey player. What about the kids? Did you catch that? Let me play it back for you again. 
If only I had back the money that me and Catherine sent that TV preacher that was screwing the hockey player. What about the kids? Eddie is piling bags of dog food onto the cart, and Clark grabs a pack of light bulbs and places them onto the bags. Then Eddie grabs another bag of dog food and smashes it right onto the bulbs. Never noticed it before, but I just thought I'd point that out for you. It's like opening up a highlights magazine and seeing all the stuff that's already circled in the hidden items. You can't unsee it now. Bingo. I would give this film five out of five stars. This movie is filled with crazy drivers. Clark, stop it! I don't want to spend the holidays dead. Honey, please, I'll do the driving, okay? Home accidents. <laughs> Oversized trees. A lot of sap in here. High speed sledding. And Cousin Eddie. Before we left, he drank a half a quart of Penn's oil. Boy, when he lifted his leg the next morning. <laughs> it teaches people that even though spending time with your loved ones during the holidays can be challenging, especially for the Griswolds, in the end, you can get a feeling of accomplishment, even grace. They want you to say grace. The blessing. The film can be purchased in a few different formats, but today I'm going to be talking about the Steelbook version put out by Warner Brothers. I mentioned in my live Facebook video a couple months ago that to certain Blu-ray collectors, Steelbooks are a must. Now I don't collect every Steelbook, but this one was definitely on top of my list. Now there's two discs you have inside the Blu-ray up here and then the DVD behind it. Now both feature audio commentary by some of the cast members as well as the producer and director and a theatrical trailer. Now I was doing some research and it turns out that all the releases in the past up to this one, even the special edition box set tins, only have those two features. It would have been nice to see a feature length making of documentary, but if you listen to the commentary, it does paint a very good picture of what went on during production. So I would definitely recommend this steel book for National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. If you like this video, click on that subscribe button below. Give it a like, give it a share, turn on that notification bell to stay up to date with all news, videos, podcasts, etc. You can also follow me on Instagram. I want to thank everyone again so much for watching this video. If you have any comments, any questions, any recommendations for reviews going forward, post them in that comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. I want to wish everyone a happy holidays and I'll see you next time.